I come back. Today we got a delivery. Can you see that? Something is poking out here. I'm not exactly happy with the packaging here. Uh, hopefully it's not damaged. Uh, the contents were actually a bargain. Let's take that, let's crack that open. You got two motors. And uh, let me pull out this one. Hopefully the foot has no crack. Because this is so stupidly packed here. He was trying to save some money on the packaging because he charged me twice the packaging or twice PNP and packed it into one lazy bugger. Okay, let me take that out. Looks like we've been lucky, nothing broken apart from some tearing here. It's the same here. How stupid can you pack a motor like that? Look at that, the shaft was poking out of the cardboard box here. That was the shaft of the motor. And it's probably the same on this side. Yeah. Oh dear. Apparently it's a company. And uh, it's just... Yeah. Sometimes it's better if you use your brain. Anyway, um, the reason I bought them is because they were cheap, obviously. And don't buy expensive stuff. Uh, let's have a look at the nameplate. Yeah, another damage. That was rubbing on the other side. Precisely on that bolt here. But this is ridiculous, isn't it? I'm gonna put it on a surface plate because it's rocking here. See that? Ah, dear. Okay. The, the reason why I bought them is uh, obviously because they were cheap. And the reason why they were cheap is they're 60 hertz motors. Most people think uh, 60 hertz motors are useless in a 50 hertz country. Um, well, this is not exactly correct because nowadays we have uh, VFDs. And I don't know if it's visible. But it says, it says 220, 60 hertz or 380, 60 hertz. But our mains here is uh, 230 volts, 50 hertz. So I tell the VFD, this thing is 60 hertz, 220 and roughly about 65 hertz, 230 volts. Or the same with the 400 volt side. So it will run at about 1700 RPM with full torque. Um, so this is actually a good deal because it gives you the opportunity to run a higher frequency, higher speed at full torque. Uh, because normally on a 50 Hz motor you run out of torque at 1500 RPM or 50 Hz because when you increase the frequency, the voltage can't go any further because your mains voltage is 230 and that's, that's about it. And then the, the current will drop. So if the current drops, the torque will go down. So the power stays constant, but the torque will drop and the speed will increase. Here we have the opportunity to make that motor, what's it, what's it rated? Uh, it's 1.1 kilowatt, so it may have 1.2 kilowatt continuously rated at um, 1750 at 230 volts or 30, 235 I got 240 here so or at 440 volts uh, we can go up to probably about 1800 rpm at full voltage depends but that was the idea behind however I need to send this guy a angry email because this is just ridiculous let me put that on a surface plate and see how it actually looks like well as expected it's a bit more here, but on the surface plate it rocks about two millimeters. So the, the leg here is bent. Bastard. Okay, uh, same battle marks from the screw here. That's how they been in the packaging. Uh, they said they're new. I'm not entirely sure if they're new. Listen to the bearings. 
Don't know. Yes, okay, they were cheap. But, uh, don't know. It's a 90 frame. Uh, I was intending to use one of the late, to have a bit more power. And the other one probably for the milling machine, for the small milling machine. But uh, that one's on similar here. Yeah. Bearings are certainly not fresh. Okay. Uh, at least it's 6205 bearings, which is uh, a common one. I have them in stock actually. So that shouldn't be a problem. But uh, it's disappointing. Let's have a look inside if they've actually been used or not. Well, <coughs> looks alright, smells fresh. So, apart from the marks here, it might be okay. I don't know what they did with them. They were probably sitting around for a while. Uh, maybe look into this one as well. Yeah, it's perhaps unused. It's just the outside is not pretty. That's not my concern. It's just a uh, must have been sitting in a dump for a while. Well, that's the second one. Don't know if that's audible. The rear bearing is toast. It's rumbling and rattling. I may have seen some hard bumps because bearings don't like that. This one sounds a bit better. Front seal is a bit dry, so it doesn't spin very long. But uh, yeah, they've been sitting for a very long time, for sure. And uh, uh, entirely sure if they've been used or not. I think we'll take it apart and have a look. This one is new. That's unused. But on this one here, I'm not entirely sure if this is unused or not. But you can't see any marks on the on the legs, and the internals here look untouched. Maybe it's just sitting around in the in the dust. But yeah, I said the bearings are shot, and it's been rolled over a couple of times. So the nameplate is crumbled as well. All right. Yeah, well, you get what you pay for. That's what I usually say. Anyway, um, it was an eBay seller and I'm gonna have a strong word with him. That's not actually acceptable what, 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 he's, uh, what he's bringing here. That's been sitting on the back for a while. So, I don't know what they do with it. <coughs> Bearings are always sounding a bit noisy when they when they sit for a long time but uh, this one I don't know where they come from probably from China but this size motor is usually around about 100 pounds and uh, maybe 120 anyway no because it's sometimes not easy to understand what I'm trying to explain we know this motor is 220 volts 60 Hertz forget Forget this line, this is our motor line. This is voltage and this is frequency. <coughs> so this curve tells us at which frequency we need which voltage, or the other way around, at which voltage we need which frequency. We know one point, which is on the main plate, that's 220 volts or 480 volts. We do it for 220 here. Um, but it works exactly the same for 380. Um, we know one point because that's on the nameplate. It's 220, 60 hertz, which is this point. 60 hertz, 220 volts. We have 230 available, so we can run that motor at 62.5 hertz, absolutely fine, at 230 volts. Uh, it will produce full torque. If you go higher in frequency, we don't have more voltage available, so the torque will drop. 
that's a different story. It's too much to explain at the moment. Uh, it's actually explained in one of my Tamiya Moto series. So, but <coughs> looking at the other side, at 50 hertz, this motor is rated 180 volts because it's 60 and 60 hertz, 220 volts. If you go down in frequency, you have to reduce the frequency because inductive resistance um, goes down when the frequency goes down. So we need smaller voltage, otherwise we're drawing too much current. So at a 50 hertz supply, this motor can only be driven with 180 volts. Apparently that's not going to work. If you just plug that in, um, you may fry it. So. And that's the beauty of a VFD. We just tell our motor that motor is rated 62.5 hertz at 230 volts, and the VFD will do exactly this core for us. Some VFDs do a bit of a, a voltage increase here to get more torque at the bottom. Uh, two reasons. Well, one is torque increase, uh, and the other one is you have the current is, is the same, it's three or four amps, but you will have some voltage. The voltage here is very tiny, it's only 10 volts. And if you have a longer cable, you've got losses in the cable, so you need to compensate for the cable losses. Uh, because let's say you've got 5 volts and, and you, you lose 2.5 volts in the cable, uh, your motor only sees 2.5 volts and the rest is in the cable, so we need to lift that bottom end a little bit so the motor starts probably at 20 30 volts and then just eases out here. Um, most better VFDs give you this option, and it's usually explained there as well. Uh, hope that makes sense. Uh, any questions, let me know. And uh, hope that explains why I was keen to get these 60 Hz motors with that low voltage rating. Um, because we can we can run that. The motor is rated 1600 something, so that's probably 750, 1750 here. Uh, at full torque and that's exactly what I want for the lathe. Uh, if we do that with 400 volt we can run at 87 hertz uh, at 95 ish hertz at full torque with 400 volt supply. Uh, I may do another core for that but not yet. And that's exactly why I need an inverter where I can play with these parameters. If you if you can't set anything you can only use a standard motor but this is for for our mains here at 50 hertz and 230 volts, this is a non-standard motor, which will probably get hot if you ride it, if you run it directly from the mains, and uh, that's where come where VFDs come into play. As long as you can tell the VFD what the motor ratings are, you can run pretty much everything. Um, I think in the second Tamiya motor video, there's a nameplate of a motor which looks very odd. I think it's 12 and a half hertz or something like that. Uh, obviously you can't run that at the uh, normal mains, you need a VFD for that. Okay, I decided to make another diagram. This is the 220 volt curve and this is the 380 volt curve. That's the voltage. Uh, we rated 380 volts, 60 hertz. That gives us roughly, uh, at 400 volt, that gives us about 62 and a half hertz. But if we set it to 220, we can go all the way up to 100, uh, 107 hertz ish, because that's our 400 volt core. So this is 220, 60 hertz, as on the other diagram. But we have 400 volt available if you use a 400 volt inverter. So 400 volt equals 107.5 hertz, approximately. That means this motor will run roughly uh, 3,100, maybe. Uh, depends on the slip, I don't know what the slip is there. Uh, but just over 3,000 uh, at full torque. That's important. Otherwise, the torque will just drop at this point and goes down. Uh, so the motor will have roughly 2 point something kilowatts, just over 2 kilowatts at this point. Because the 87 hertz point, uh, normally a 50 hertz motor is 87, that's about here. But this motor would be at 50 hertz, that mo motor would be rated um, 180 volts, we found that before. And at 87, we're roughly at 320, 
that's here at this point that's the 87 hertz point 320 we got more, much more voltage available that's the reason why we can go higher in speed without loss of torque and that's the problem if you if you run a motor very slow you're running out of torque at the bottom end and uh, so to to have the opportunity and gear your pulley ratio relatively high uh, you need to have some oomph at the top and that's why you do that you get the full speed range from 0 to 3000 rpm with a 1500 or 1600 rpm motor at full torque so this motor has 2 kilowatt instead of 1.1 1 .1. um, yeah I know it sounds confusing but it's real uh, and if you run at this point you will not overload the motor you may threaten your bearings a little bit because they may not be good for that speed but uh, that's an easy one just fit proper, proper bearings and uh, that's about it again that's the reason why I was keen to get these motors because I, I did realize uh, they they weren't for a relatively low voltage at 50 hertz and uh, as long as we uh, stay within the torque envelope of the current envelope of the motor so the motor is in delta here this is star this is delta as long as we follow this curve the motor will draw the current whatever it says on the nameplate uh, that's 4.8 amps so if we follow this voltage frequency curve up the way at full load the motor will draw 4.8 amps no more so we're not overloading the motor even if we run double the frequency and roughly double the power because the torque stays the same the speed is double that gives us double the, free, uh, double the power simple as that all right uh, that was a little deviation into the science of electric motors anyway that's it for this one thanks for watching thanks for subscribing until next time And this was all of the packaging material which was in it. Nothing else, just a few plastic straps around. Uh, it was coming out here, it was coming out here. That was the seat. This food was pounding into the side as well. Then with the shaft here. Hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time.